Hey there, comic friends. Travis again. This is it. This is the last of the Oh No Vertigo series of books. Uh, and we're going to start right out with Army of Love, issue number one. Your life, your war. See your recruiter. Motivation and morale. Um, I don't know a lot about this book. I know there are people who really like it. Uh, I know that Res Reads really enjoys it. Uh, I think that um, Terrence Comic Crack also. Um, has partaken of this book. So I need to get around to reading this. Maybe I'll have a conversation with them about it or something like that. That would be kind of fun. Anyway, so here we are. Issue number two. So Rick Vetch and Gary Ernskin. Uh, this is 2007. Army of Love. Time to try men's souls. Because they're all about that poodle, right? Not the cleavage. Yeah. Anyway, personal victory. Issue number three. And I got a couple issues of issue number four. No idea what this book is about. I think clearly suggestive in a lot of ways, right? Um, you know, what isn't suggestive about this cover? I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, issue number five. I mean, the gas can's happy to see him. Issue number six. Number seven, when you're a grunt, you're a grunt. Issue number eight. They're in the hot zone. Get it? Hot zone. Issue number nine. Okay, I do like the Abbey Rogue cover. That is fun. I like Abbey Rogue covers. It's one of the kind of um, homage covers I, I, I really dig. Uh, so, issue number 10. Issue number 11. Got a couple of issues, a couple of copies of issue number 12. And then this is actually Army of Love, The Art of War, issue number one. So it went 12 issues and then started another series. This was, this was 2000, started in 2007. This is 2008, October 2008. Mona Lisa cover there. There is um, issue number two of Army of Love, Art of War. Oh, what's the diner? I can't remember what the diner um, uh, piece of art is called. But, but clearly, it is homage to that. So I would guess that this is an homage also um, to a piece of art. I'm not sure what. Is this the one where they're like in the park? I don't remember. I, I, I feel like I know it, but I'm not placing it. So if you know, you let me know. Of course, our classic there. Issue number four. <clears throat> <clears throat> issue number five. Issue number six, where we get a nice, um, the end of uh, the Art of War, and it is a nice paint by numbers. Pretty slick, huh? Yeah. All righty. Goes out of the way. Next up, we have Dead Enders. No past, no future. Ed Brubaker, Police and Case. I'm assuming that Case is inking Police's work. Um, would be my would be my guess. This is uh, March of 2000. Um, I bet you this is um, uh, edited by Shelley Bond. It just has her kind of a mod feel to it. Her kind of a thing. You can check out her stuff now. The Black Crown work that she helps work on. So there's issue number two. Dead Enders. Issue three on their mopeds. Like I said, very mod. Issue number four. Number five. Number six. More Ed Brubaker work I need to check out because I don't know anything about this either. Issue seven. Issue 8. It's tearing me apart, but no one can know about my secret affair. A la um, the old romance comics, right? Number 9. Issue 10. 
Stewart on it now. Wonder if that's Cameron Stewart. Number 11. Number 12. 13. Some more moped racing there. 14. I think these are all Bond um, covers. Um, and Philip Bond is Shelley Bond's husband, but at the time, she probably wasn't a Bond, I would guess. Probably before they were married. Issue number 15. And finally, issue number 16. I think, believe that is the end of the run of Dead Enders. Let's see what we have next year. So, here we got Egypt, the Book of the Remains, issue number one. This is yet another uh, Peter Milligan book that I have not read. I've read bits and pieces of it, but I have not read the whole thing. So, looking forward to diving into this, like all Peter Milligan stuff. Um, Glenn Dillon on art. And then here is issue two, Book of Shadows. Shoot number three. See, interesting. Here it's book two of seven. Here it suddenly becomes book three of six. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Always frustrating when you're collecting books and weird stuff like that happens. I do love that cover. That is a cool looking cover. I'm sure. This, see, now it's back to being issue uh, four of seven. So I, I don't know. You know? Um, strange. Must have just been a typo, maybe. I don't know. There's five. This is in 1995. I don't know if I said that. Apologies if I did not. Issue six, the book of power. And then finally issue seven. So it really was seven, the book of names. Sure enough. Look forward to diving into that one too. I like all the old Milligan stuff from Vertigo and whatnot quite a bit. Uh, this is just a sneak preview thing. Um, I don't know why I hang on to all these. They're basically advertisements and whatnot. Uh, this is from 1994. Um, this would be, you know, Sandman, Sandman Mystery Theater. Um, you know, I don't remember Kill Your Boyfriend. Books of Magic. Uh, Mob Fire. I don't remember that one either. Um, I, I want to say I was still collecting. Well, maybe I wasn't. I think I was a poor college student at that point. Not quite at the poor, poor um, new dad when I didn't have money, but I think that's about the time that that would be the case that I was college students. Of course, you guys have seen some of my Flinch um, before. I got more of them now, so I'm gonna have doubles of some of these. Uh, Flinch is a horror anthology, uh, which is cool. Um, you know, this issue has three, um, uh, three tales in it. So you get artwork by like Jim Lee, Richard Corbin, and Frank Quietly in there, so that's pretty sweet. Um, that's what this whole thing is. Uh, that way, you just get some really great um, artists mixed in here with some interesting writers and whatnot. So there's issue two. Issue three. Seriously dig that cover. Issue four. Five. That looks like a... I want to say that is a um, Ed Brinson cover. Hmm. I don't know. Um, there's issue number six. That looks like a J.J. Mulleth, but I don't know that for sure. I'm not seeing the signature off the bat. I don't know if anybody cares or not. Anyway, issue number seven. Issue eight. Issue nine. Hit 2000 here. Issue 10. Issue 11, that lady's kind of, it's a dog, the lady's head on it, what? Issue 12, 13, that one looks cool too. Fourteen. Uh, 
15. And issue 16. I don't know how many. Was it just 16 issues? I'll have to look it up. I don't remember what it is and whatnot. But that would be a full complete. Uh, what I had up until this point was just bits and pieces that I picked up here and there. So, And then we get the Ferris, which I have a couple of the first issues and I didn't continue to collect it. Um, but uh, in, in hindsight, I am looking forward to, to reading it. Uh, fun um, written story by Bill Ingham, Phil Jimenez doing art. And the landing on it, and of course the Adam Hughes, wonderful Adam Hughes covers. This is 2012, issue number two. It's basically about the, the ladies of the fables and all their stuff. So I get some great um, fun stories with the princesses, basically, what all they are up to. Issue five. Issue six, issue seven, issue eight. Some great artists in some of these. I think uh, Miranda loved their work quite a bit. Issue ten, eleven. Clearly, they get into some bloody spots. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, love this issue, 17, that cover hair hanging down, the eyeballs that turn into crocodiles and whatnot, her wonderful, her wonderful hand tantu or henta, whichever it is. Yes, very cool. Very cool cover. Issue 18. Nineteen. She's still on camera here. 20, oh, the eyeball picked out. 21, mice and men. 22, there's the mice. 23, 24, 25, there's our three blind mice now. 26. 27. The clamor for a glamour. 28. 29. These covers are outstanding. 30. This is when they were doing um, Vertigo, ran an entire month where every cover was actually the beginning of the book. So the cover had dialogue on it, uh, just like it would be a regular page. This is actually page one of the book there in 2014. So all the books, the entire Vertigo line were that way. Issue 31. I didn't realize that Ferris went on this long. So there is issue number 32. 34. Yeah, it's actually. That is it for Ferris. At least it for my copies of it. We're down to the last stuff here, and I'm excited to have this run. I, embarrassingly, I have not read this. I've read a couple issues. Now I have the entire run in single issues. Jeff Lemire, Sweet Tooth, issue number one for a whole dollar in 2009. Gus! So you're just going to get a whole bunch of covers of that. 
issue two, issue three, post-apocalyptic story about our friend here with the antlers. Right, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have a couple copies of issue ten. That's a great cover, too. Him lifting the lid off the house and of course there's he's inside there too oh what the heck's going on there huh issue number 11 12 a paint by numbers interesting does a paint by numbers for a lot of books at that time or something issue 13 14 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let me pull some of these down so we don't have a, a crash. It's a demon bear! Alright. So, issue 21. Issue 22. So, I got a couple copies of issue 23. Issue 24. Love this cover. All the skulls down here. But I love the way these balloons have kind of flattened out. So, they look like a skull face, too, right? Pretty cool. 25. Six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Matt Kent doing some art on that one. Twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, And finally, issue 40, final issue. So, super stoked to get to read that finally, the whole thing straight through. Um, hope I can find the time for that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and well, someday I'll have a big haul of something else, and maybe I'll do some more of these. Anyway, have a great one, everybody.